Thanks for coming. This is DevOps ICU, improving DevOps results by correctly integrating UX. In case anyone isn't familiar with the term ICU, it's the intensive care unit, the part of a hospital giving care and treatment to the most critical of patients. Your DevOps might be in the ICU. I'm your DevOps ICU doctor, Debbie Levitt. I've been a UX strategist, designer, consultant, speaker, and trainer since the mid-90s. P-Type, short for prototype, is my full-service UX and product design agency. We also help companies build or improve UX teams, including where UX belongs in an organization, hiring, onboarding, training, processes, tools, and getting departments on the same page. Clients like to call me Mary Poppins. I fly in, fix everything, sing a few songs, and fly away to where I'm needed next. Though it's always better when UX stays on, even after someone thinks they're done with a project. And please add me on LinkedIn. This session boils my two-day DevOps ICU workshop down to about 30 minutes, so we'll get through everything we can. And normally when I give this live, I tell people, take pictures, tweet, but... In this case, we're watching a video, but you're still welcome to tweet me at DevOpsICU. And uh, in case you see this camera icon, that's for my live audiences. Then they know this is a good moment to take a picture of the screen. Some people have asked if my session is just a sales pitch for UX. Well, that's a really strange question because if you're here, I don't have to sell it to you. You're interested in UX and you need some help or tips. Whether UX is new to your company or you're looking to fix some of the horror stories you've been living now, this presentation is about how to work UX experts and tasks into teams and workflows. Our time together looks like this. UX and DevOps are intertwined. UX basics. I found that sometimes half my audience, even engineers and agile experts, don't know as much about UX as they thought. What does UX do, and why does their black box of mystery seem to take so long? How does UX fit into Lean, Agile, and any software dev methodology? There are a few slides about the value of UX for those who still need help aligning coworkers or leadership on how UX will save engineering time, money, and sanity by helping them avoid annoying rebuilds. We'll have a little bit about measuring the results of integrating UX, and we'll end with some do's and don'ts for collaboration. At many companies, engineering is fed by other teams. Blueprints, ideas, designs, and concepts come from somebody who creates layouts, flows, and how the customer interacts with the system. These are non-engineering individuals and teams who are part of collaboration throughout the software development process. Engineering doesn't operate in a vacuum. Too many companies are excluding or circumventing UX because they see it excluded from agile maps, infographics, books, how-tos, and training. Or they assume that UX workers are just time and budget wasters. Or they assume UX is just wireframes and anybody can draw boxes on a page. Wrong. Expert UX architects research, design, test, and iterate on everything between someone saying, I have an idea and let's get it to programmers to be built. DevOps is about so much more than how developers connect with IT, how infrastructure is managed, and how frameworks can be improved. It's about recognizing how many teams are truly involved in the software development process, how intertwined their roles and work are, and finding better ways to make sure everybody is at the table. Developers and engineering architects want to be involved when the product and creative teams are designing the software or system, but where's that in the current definition of DevOps? Product, UX, and creative teams want to stay involved during the engineering processes, yet so many methodologies exclude them. These are old silos we need to break down. All your customer sees is your user experience. That's it. They don't see a thousand developers or whether you were agile or lean. You're a user, too. And the software and systems you use have competitors. What makes you select and use the tools, software, apps, or systems you've chosen? When you use a system that you don't like, are you thinking, man, how many sprints did they spend on that? Probably not. When something doesn't work the way you expect it to, you're probably thinking, who built this junk? And that's a good question. Who designed this product? Who researched with users like you to learn your habits, motivations, needs, and then design for those? Was this tested on people like you before it was unleashed on the public? 
UX is driven by some of the same results that DevOps wants. We're problem finders, problem solvers, product designers, and customer advocates, driven by product quality and building what customers really need. We care about our teams working efficiently and getting engaging, fantastic, easy to learn, easy to use, tell your friends it's great, products to market as fast as possible. Enhancing this relationship saves time, money, and sanity. And today, we'll be looking at how integrating UX can improve all of these areas. Let's take a more concrete look at your process. If you're not working with UX now, your process probably looks something like this. The client, the product manager, the CEO, someone with a vision tells you what they want. You build it, you test it, you get it on a server. Wouldn't you know, someone sees it and goes, now that I see this, I think I want something different. Well, now you're going to have to start over. All right, what do you want now? We'll build it, we'll test it, we'll go to... And eventually, after you cycle through this who knows how many times, you'll release something live and hope customers like it. If you had UX as part of your process, it would look a little more like this. The client, product manager, person with the vision, CEO, tells UX what they want or what the vision is. UX cycles through the user-centered design tasks. UX iterates. UX tests it to ensure it's a great solution. Now, at that point, the client and the internal stakeholders and the users should like it. UX delivers it to engineering, ready to build, once. And if the client wants to change his mind, he comes back to UX, not to engineering. UX runs interference on all of this. Plus, the UX process is the best time to brainstorm, experiment, and change your mind. It certainly costs way less for us to change our wireframes or prototypes than for engineering to deal with change requests or rebuilds. The goal is for you to build a fantastic, vetted product once. Can you smell that? That's the sweet pizza smell of not having to keep building and rebuilding the same thing over and over because someone keeps changing their mind. User experience is the more scientific, psychological, and problem-solving side of product, experience, and service design. Goals include happier, more loyal customers, ease of learning and use, shorter, more intuitive processes, and accessibility for people with mobility, vision, hearing, cognitive, and other issues. Quick accessibility note. An American football game a few years ago decided to get creative with team uniforms, changing the normal uniforms to one team in all red and one team in all green. Except this is how the game looked to people who were colorblind. Many, including former NFL players, tweeted they had no idea what was going on. You thought that good UX just needs a few hours to draw boxes on a page, but part of our process is to take differently abled people into consideration when designing interfaces. Just like software dev has processes like Agile, UX has one key approach most companies and practitioners use, user-centered design. With a short session, let's just hit a few key points here because this can be a long process that takes time or sometimes we're doing pieces of this and we can move more quickly. Requirements aren't just about reading documentation. It's important to start collaborating right away. UX shouldn't find out later they've designed something that engineering can't build. Also, let's have very early conversations about APIs and services. Do we have what we need, or should engineering start building new ones while UX starts their process? Research is an important piece of what UX does. It's not user-centered without users. Statistics and quantitative data are great, but there's no substitute for interviewing users, deeply understanding them, and getting qualitative data. UX wants to know the why, and not just the what. Information architecture has to do with hierarchies, structure, and taxonomies. This could be site navigation. It could be how products are categorized in an e-commerce database. We want to make sure customers will easily find products by categories, metadata, and filters. Interaction design, sometimes also called experience design, is what most people think of when they imagine UX. These are our wireframes and prototypes, the blueprints of our designs. These would show process flows, layouts, menus, interactions, paths, choices, and so much more. 
Now it goes to user testing, also called usability testing, which happens during our process and before engineering writes a line of code. We need to make sure that the idea and the execution are fantastic for our target customers. We don't want engineering to build it until we're sure this is what will be built. User testing will bring to light any flaws, giving UX the chance to iterate on ideas, which sends us back to interaction design work. UX and UI are often confused. One way to learn to tell them apart is to hit the websites of some well-known universities to check what types of classes you must take to get a degree in UX or visual design. UX practitioners are more concerned about functions, processes, organization, layouts, and usability. A visual designer is normally focused on the aesthetics of these elements, color choices, typography, spacing, branding, etc. Think of your UX specialist as the building architect. Your UI specialist is your interior designer. You need both, and they do important but very different jobs. Being talented in UX doesn't mean you're a great artist. Being a great artist doesn't mean you're a great UX designer. Many people are sure they're great at both, but it's rarer than people want to admit. UX sometimes disagrees with product managers and engineering on how much of a product do we build and release as an MVP. Well, which is the MVP jogging outfit? Non-UX roles often say the first one, since it's viable and, minus the hat, it certainly is the most minimal jogging outfit possible. UX would say the middle one, since we want something that has enough features to create customer satisfaction. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. This is especially true for that first time a customer installs your app or visits the website. Will this be too lean for them to really use, enjoy, get fish hooked on? <laughs> Remember that you're running the risk that customers think you're bad at this or you build broken things. And if people were turned off by the MVP or beta, will they reinstall and give you another try for your next release? How often do you give companies second or third chances? That's why for UX, the V in MVP stands for valuable. What is the leanest product we can build and release that the customer will still feel has great value? Customers don't care if you're calling it an MVP. They'll be happy to hate it and tell everybody they know they didn't like it. People love negative attention. Take it from Eric, Mr. Lean. Even if you're not doing lean, he said, what if we found ourselves building something nobody wanted? In that case, what did it matter if we did it on time and on budget? Go to lean and minimal, and you might be building what nobody wants. Your UX expert can help product and engineering prioritize stories and features to find that balance. Buckle your seatbelts. I'm going to use safe agile in some of my examples, but please know that everything I tell you can be adapted to any methodology or flavor of agile with a few things that are more specific to safe. Once upon a time, I went for safe agile training where when I asked where UX fits in, they had no idea where UX belonged. And if I figure it out, I should tell them. UX now gets a little garbage recycling icon on the bottom left with milestones and system team. But that doesn't tell me, or anybody, how UX works in. Are we in sprints? Are we on the team or outside of it? When I show this to people, some reply, well, safe is a joke. Maybe or maybe not, but it's hard to find any agile info or training going deeply into how you work with UX, the people designing what engineering will build. Version 4.5 of the Safe Agile Framework says, while UX experts used to be in charge of the design process, this was often too siloed. So, their solution for that is to remove UX experts because that solves siloing. Where else does your company like to put untrained, non-specialists in software development teams? And why would untrained non-specialists imagine they can do UX work? Well, notice the I for design and the feel for user interaction. These words are carefully chosen to minimize UX experts. You wouldn't say an expert cardiologist just as a feel for working with the human heart. 
You wouldn't say your senior developer, gosh golly gee, she sure has an eye for working with programming languages. But these words are there to help agile team members who self-assess as having an eye for design and a feel for user interaction decide they're perfectly qualified to do UX work. SAFE appears to believe the specialty training isn't really needed as long as you have eyes and feels. So where does UX fit into Agile? Well, first of all, nobody puts UX in the corner. Here's where UX really lives. We're here, in portfolio land, involved in what we're building, why we're building it, and prioritizing what we're building. UX lives here, in continuous exploration, that process of continually exploring the market and user needs, and defining a vision, roadmap, and set of features that address those needs. We're all about customer solutions completely. It's what we live for. We're making DevOps better wherever we can. We want to improve and enhance the culture. We're all about decreasing failure rates, though we're thinking more on the human experience level rather than the technical bug level. We want shorter time between fixes, but we also want there to be fewer fixes. Better UX design earlier, fewer fixes later. One UX designer should be on the Agile team. He or she represents the creative team and can circle back with visual designers, copywriters, researchers, and others involved in the UX process. We're all over this thing. People who aren't sure where UX fits into Agile mostly don't understand what UX does and why they do it. But you're starting to get that now, which will make you the genius hero at your company. UX should be part of sprints, but for larger new projects must start weeks or months ahead of kickoff. If you want engineering to have something to build at kickoff, we've got to start ahead of everybody else. Sometimes you need a spike, sometimes UX needs its equivalent. And if UX can get time before the project kicks off, then engineering never has to worry about what UX did ahead of time or how long it took. Some big design might have happened up front, but it didn't affect you, and I'll talk more about that later. Include UX in sprints, remembering that we have to be two or more sprints ahead of engineering. Here I'm showing what I've found to work best. UX gets started on research, design, and testing. When UX is looking good, it goes to UI for visual design. Engineering can start with any back end that the UX designs might require while the front end is being designed and the specs created. Get plenty of tech stories or fixing of tech debt into the backlog. That way, if UX's creative and cyclical process runs late, devs can truly be agile. Instead of waiting for UX, they can switch to some low-hanging fruit that product or engineering has prioritized. The key to the UX process is user testing before delivering anything to engineering. That way, we're sure this is a great execution of the right idea for our customers. User testing nearly always finds flaws in the design, allowing UX to iterate and improve. Sometimes there are a surprising amount of flaws. Sometimes it's best to test again before declaring things finalized. Things can run late. It happens with engineering also. Estimations were off. QA found more bugs than anybody expected. Something really broke. Oops, we need an API call for that. Hey, it happens to the best of us. And remember your Agile Manifesto principles. Principle 1. Our highest priority is to satisfy the customer. That's directly linked to how valuable, delightful, easy to learn, easy to use, and life improving our product is. Principle 5. Give motivated individuals the environment and support they need and trust them to get the job done. You have to hire great UX workers and give them trust and what they need. Principle 9. Continuous attention to technical excellence and good design enhances agility. Design matters. Let's make it great. And my favorite, Principle 10. Simplicity. The art of maximizing the amount of work not done is essential. When UX kills or changes features, we're often seen as the bad guys. But engineering should support our efforts to create less work for you by creating simpler or fewer features, or by eliminating projects that are wrong for the company or team to undertake. Someone who saw my presentation told me his company is trying to get away from big design up front, and it sounded like I was recommending big design up front. He wanted to know why UX wouldn't use fast feedback and iterations. Let's take a look. 
Imagine your company is setting up a new workflow for a customer to register and sign up for your system. Let's say there's five steps, creating an account, selecting the product, payment details, order review, and completion. That means developers can break building this into five chunks, or perhaps more, even smaller chunks. Engineers have asked me, why UX doesn't design step one, deliver that, design step two, deliver that. If UX designed one step and delivered it to engineering, when would UX test the entire workflow? And if the workflow has flaws, does engineering want to rebuild what it already coded because it got things piecemeal? That doesn't sound efficient or like it'll save time, money, or sanity. Remember that developers can break their work into smaller bits because they know how the story ends. They have stories, features, and the big picture. They can think about all five steps when building step one because they have documentation, information, and maybe even wireframes, prototypes, and other UX deliverables that tell them the story of the entire process or feature. But when UX gets a project, we don't have the big picture or know how the story ends. We have to write it. We have vision, ideas, pain points, innovation concepts. That means for larger or newer features or products, we can't break our work into small pieces and then deliver each piece. Budgets and timelines are what blocks UX from getting fast feedback and iterating. We always want that feedback, we want to improve, and we want to design what really works for customers. Before complaining that UX is a bad dog for not using fast feedback and iterating, Check if UX was given the budget and timing to collect that fast feedback and iterate on designs. In 2018, a famous tech company announced it would soon be doing a redesign of their most recent redesign. Once the product was released, they found out customers considered the new features clutter, obstacles, and drawbacks. Customers hadn't asked for these new features and they didn't want, need, or like them. The backlash was serious enough that the company blog admitted the new version was overcomplicated, lacking simplicity, cluttered, difficult to navigate, and had gone a little far with some wacky visual design choices. How much money did this company spend on all of those concepts, layouts, and engineers building and testing it for multiple platforms? And now the cost to undo and redo? A million dollars? More? Think about the time and money this company would have saved if they had pivoted or changed direction before developers wrote a line of code. We can know up front. There's no longer a good reason or excuse to just build it, just ship it, and then find out later it's a disaster. Companies can save heaps of time, money, staff resources, and customer agony by integrating the full UX process. Your UX department would have known at multiple points that the proposed new design and features were overcomplicated, lacking simplicity, cluttered, and difficult to navigate. UX specialists should be working hand-in-hand -hand with product teams early on so that we can block or improve ideas that are unlikely to match the customer. This is a poll I run at my live presentations. Attendees vote on a range from customer doesn't care to furious customer might drop us. No matter where I do this talk, the results tend to look like this. The first four deeply affect the user's experience, their perception of your software, and their perception of your company. The last one, about timing and budget, well, that's bad for DevOps. But as people tend to vote, it mostly doesn't affect the customer. Maybe the customers have to wait a little longer for that next release. But this poll shows you that you would know that poor UX is enough to make customers leave or consider leaving, which means it's important. It's make or break. We need to work smarter and get qualified experts in every step of planning, prioritization, and design, and continue the collaboration throughout development. Let's improve collaboration and culture. Take it from Phil, General Manager of IBM Design. He knows it doesn't make sense to try to turn everybody into designers. Let's say your specialized database programmer is a bottleneck right now. Too many stories looking for his specialization. What do you do? Solutions can include pair programming, creating a skills matrix so work can be better balanced in the future, and perhaps you allow more teammates to do exploratory testing so that developers get feedback earlier. Maybe you just have to add another developer to the team. You know what isn't suggested in this scenario? We don't expect that the specialized programmer will teach their specialty to others on the team. But I read a scrum book that warned UX specialists might be a bottleneck, so they should train other people to do their job. 
Well, I studied some basic language programming in the 70s, which tells me I have an eye for programming and a feel for coding. Remember those eyes and feels? They're back. Would you like to teach me some Ruby or Java because you're backed up with work? Should I go take a three-day boot camp and then start coding something that'll go to production? This doesn't sound like a great solution, does it? Training others to do UX's job hurts productivity, efficiency, product, and culture. Because UX is being told once again, anybody can do your job. Side note here, any conference session that claims it'll teach you to run UX research or testing or do UX design is doing UX and your customers a disservice by making you believe that in just a few hours, you can do UX work. Nobody would offer a one-hour session on Java for non-programmers at a UX conference and would declare that after that session, you can do real programming at your job. Other fun ways to collaborate include assigning tickets to UX when issues, ambiguities, or the like are found during QA testing. Whether you use Jira, version 1, or another system, bring UX into it. Don't leave UX out, and don't put UX in some other system like a Trello board if that's not how you track defects and ambiguities. Getting a ticket assigned to UX is a great way to start the conversation. It also shows respect. You know this is a problem. You know it's a UX problem. You're not going to fix it without your UX specialist. Super opportunity for collaboration. But most importantly, it includes UX in the process. This should streamline the workflow and make things more efficient. Better than a Slack conversation, better than no conversation, and get it all documented. Invite your UX person to stand-ups, retro, release planning, and any meeting or showcase where UX could be discussed. If something comes up and UX isn't in that meeting, table it until you can connect with your practitioner. Missing a meeting isn't an excuse to make decisions in your teammate's field of expertise without him or her. It rarely gets fixed later. I can't think of the last time an engineering team highly prioritized fixing UX debt that we knew we had before or while the product was being coded. Nobody will want to go back and work on it. We have to push ahead to cover more stories, features, or backlog. Without customer satisfaction, you might not have customers. If you like quantitative data, we can measure how improving your processes by integrating UX has made positive changes. We can keep an eye on customer service, call center, and social media, like fewer complaints, better app reviews, higher app ratings, fewer support tickets, fewer call center calls, and more positive semantics of social posts. We could also look at more app installs and fewer uninstalls, higher average order value, and higher conversion rate. Just like there are many metrics allowing us to determine if customer satisfaction is increasing or decreasing, the desired result of these DevOps goals are measurable. How long do stories, projects, and epics take to get to market before and after your UX revolution? I'd also imagine that developer time estimates become more accurate when they have finalized UX designs on which to base their estimates versus working from stories or whatever you're doing now. If UX is providing blueprints and those are being followed, we're hoping engineering has less work by reducing surprise changes and rebuilds. Getting releases out to the public more quickly or often sounds great, but let's make sure we're building the right product. Nobody wants to continuously deploy pieces of junk. Internal communication and culture are measurable, but most of that will be qualitative or anecdotal. Are you having fewer conflicts with UX or on cross-functional teams? Are people collaborating and communicating better? If you need quantitative data, start with a survey where workers rate their perceptions. Then give them the survey again a few months later. We want the bed to be empty because the patient recovered and is better than ever. If your DevOps needs critical care and treatment, UX can't fix everything. But you might be surprised how much great UX can improve. It's time to rewrite the book. Refresh any poor or incomplete training. Talk to your managers and leadership about what you've learned here about how productivity, efficiency, collaboration, culture, product, and customer satisfaction can all be improved. Work with UX leadership on improving collaboration, culture, tools, workflows, and processes. And it's time to stop pointing fingers. Doesn't matter how we got here. It only matters that everybody involved is doing their part to pave some new roads.
The path to getting your DevOps out of the ICU and seeing improved DevOps results, great product, and happy customers is the complete and correct integration of UX specialists and processes. Well, thanks for joining me. If you like the short version, you might like the longer version. Check that out online at devops.icu workshops. Thanks again for joining me and have a great day.